Hey everyone, Dr. Frunky here with a really special unboxing video. Now, I know that I say that a whole lot of them are special, but this one is special to me because today we're going to unbox my own personal Koenig Arius build. Before I get into that, I wanted to show you this knife. This is the Nick Chuprin and Robert Carter BBM. This was my favorite knife of 2017, and one of the reasons for that was this black and green combination. Now, I just ordered this sort of on a whim, and when it came, it actually just blew me away, and I really have enjoyed it, to the point where when I bought the Dark Knight Satellite knife, actually, that knife is called the Black Knight Satellite knife. I kind of messed that up in the video, so go back and correct that in your mind. In any case, uh, I liked that, uh, but Jeff laughed at me and called that the Xbox knife. He did it anyways, and I thought it looked awesome, but I've been enjoying this theme so much that I actually took it to Bill Koenig, and uh, I wanted to apply it to the Arius. And so we're going to show you what the Frunky Arius, or the Frunk Arius, I'm calling it, really looks like. So you open this really nice magnetic box. It comes with this super cool birth certificate right here that shows that it's a Koenig Arius in CTS XHP with carbon fiber and titanium handles, numbered 13, and it was born only a few days ago. I'm filming this on the 7th of January of 2018, so it was really only born a few days ago. So let us look at this knife. I'm just going to pull it right out of the box and show it to you for just a second. Oh my goodness, look at those details. Well, we are gonna get into that here in a second, but look at this box. It comes with this beautifully padded foam box with a sticker and a microfiber cloth. That's some nice packaging. I really appreciate a nice box when you're spending this kind of money on a knife. So thank you very much, Bill. In any case, uh, we're gonna take a look at this knife. Look at this amazing thing. Now, I've been working with Bill for a couple of months on this knife. I'm constantly changing my mind, unfortunately, because he is constantly improving his knives. That is one of the things I love about small makers, is that they constantly improve their knives. Now, I know Spyderco talks about constant quality improvement, and they do a very good job of that. They're constantly taking their knives, and they're making them better. Take, for instance, this Paramilitary 2. This one is constantly being improved. But this knife, the Arius, is more or less being improved on the fly. Almost from week to week, Bill is dreaming up these excellent new ideas, and these things are changing on each subsequent run of these knives. And so I was asking him for a few of these things as we were building it, uh, well, as he was building it, as I was kind of thinking about it, and uh, I really appreciate his patience and his kindness with me and uh, his ability to understand my addiction going on there. So thank you, Bill, for that. So let's go ahead and break this knife down objectively and we'll get some uh, measurements right here. It Just like all other Arii or Ariuses, uh, this one has a three and a half inch blade. It's about 4.1 inches back to the pivot and it's about eight and three quarters inches overall. The uh, handle is about five inches, maybe just a hair over five inches in overall length. And the grip area is about 4.6, 4.7 inches in overall length. So a nice sized handle. Uh, the handle thickness is coming in at about 0.56 inches. The blade stock is 152 thousandths. The overall height when closed, some people have asked me about that, is 1.5 inches. So it's a bit wide, but I actually don't mind that at all. Let's break this knife down anatomically now and see what we're working with. Up front is this beautifully done blade in CTS XHP. Now, I'm not usually a fan of DLC coatings, but Bill is a huge fan of doing it, and I have seen him make some beautiful knives that way. He is able to achieve a very consistent and very solid matte black finish, and I think it's very cool, and it creates this high contrast look on the blade that really accentuates the different millings that he's done here. So he first coated the blade in DLC, see, you can actually still see it on the inside of the uh, hole right here, and then he mirror polished the flats, and so it creates this high contrast look that's absolutely amazing, and I really, really like that. Uh, the blade it has this nice DLC finish, and the edge is done very evenly, and it is very sharp. That's very, very nice. I appreciate that. Mine is done in a hollow grind, so it comes very, very thin behind the edge. I'm going to go ahead and measure that out for you all here. So we've got uh, our calipers going on. Uh, so that is coming right behind the edge to about, uh, let's see if I can cut it down there. Oh, uh, there it is, 0 0.0225. 
That is almost identical to what the paramilitary 2 is behind the edge, about 0 0.022. So very, very thin behind the edge. This is gonna be an amazing slicer. I've already caught a couple of things with it, and it's incredible. I really love it. Of course, I had the other one. The other Arius that I reviewed was actually a full flat grind. I enjoyed that one very much, but this thin hollow grind, incredible. I absolutely love it. Now, XHP is a very nice steel. It's sort of a powdered version of D2 with some extra sort of tweaking to make it nice and stainless. So that's very cool. I like that a lot. It's a, a very corrosion resistant steel and that, that mirror finish is gonna stay beautiful for a long time. Moving back to the pivot, uh, Bill did something very special on this knife by polishing the outer edge of his sort of special uh, pivot uh, arrangement right there. He has this unique deed pivot where it stays in place and makes sure that it's not going to spin on you and you take it apart by taking out the screw from the back side. And I appreciate that a lot too because now I'm not having to take out the surface screw, the presentation screw, and mess up the appearance of my knife. Too many makers are doing that. Anyways, uh, the pivot runs on ceramic ball bearings and it is incredibly smooth. Now, the, f the first knife I reviewed was also unbelievably smooth, but this is among the best actions in the entire world. Really and truly, this is just such a nice free-falling action. I'm going to see if I can just... You see it just falls closed. It's unbelievable. The detent is very crisp on this one. It's nice and crisp as compared to the other one that I had. And uh, I really, really like that. It's a strong detent. It allows you to get that blade out there very quickly. This one also has an upgrade to the flipper tab right here. The radius is a little bit wider, so it's not quite as sharp as the last one I had. That was a small complaint that I had on the last one. While I'll say this one still has a little bit of some contouring that could be applied, it is significantly better and not uncomfortable to flip over and over and over again. So very, very nice improvement on that one, Bill. Very nice. So moving back to the handles here, it's got this amazingly done carbon fiber front scale. And this is what he's calling his Style 55. This is a, a milled line right here, and then these milled and hollowed out areas right here. And in carbon fiber, I think that that's amazingly cool. Look how thin that little edge is right there, that little area right there. It's very delicate, but it feels very strong when you touch it. It's incredible that they're able to mill that out. You would think that that would break very easily, but uh, it, it's really beautiful. It doesn't get in the way when you're holding the knife either. It honestly provides a little bit of traction for your fingers right there. It is not even the least bit uncomfortable. To me, it also balances out the hole in the blade uh, and sort of the hole in the back spacer. It gives it this nice flowing design. For some reason, it reminds me a bit of a feather and it makes it seem lighter. I, I just like it. It's very very, very nice. The backside is absolutely spectacular. I have my fingerprints all over it, but he's done an awesome DLC finish on the titanium frame. Uh, and then, and he's got this awesome milling pattern that came with it. It's beautiful. I love looking at it. It also gives it a little bit of texture uh, for when you're holding the knife. It's very, very nice in hand. Now, one of the coolest parts of this lock side, and this is present on all the other Arius's as well, is this extremely thin lock bar cutout right here. The way that it's done is unlike anybody else in the industry. These tolerances are incredible, and it's amazing to see that. So something that's also really special right here is that uh, this window in the, in the uh, clip and in the body actually reveals the number 13 on the inside there. So... A little story behind that, this scale up front was actually supposed to only be a part of a 12 knife series, but Bill went ahead and made me lucky number 13 right here. And uh, so I'm very thankful that he allowed me to do this custom build with that scale on it right there. Now, the, my absolute most frunkalicious part of this knife is all the green hardware. He laughed at me when I asked him for it, but I think he likes that it turned out this way because it looks awesome to me. We've got the over travel stop screw, We've got the, uh, the backspacer screws and the clip and the backspacer all done in green. So I'll give you some nice close-ups of all that. Very nicely done green. He absolutely nailed it for me. And it gives a nice contrast to this otherwise plain knife. A little pop of color uh, that is just really fun for me to look at. And I think overall this project is spectacular. I couldn't be happier. And I can't wait to carry this knife and give you guys a final diagnosis. You're going to see a lot of this on my Instagram at Dr. Frunky, so go follow me over there. 
Follow Bill at Koenig Knives and go over to his website at KoenigKnives.com. Click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel here. And as always, guys, take care.